All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the JS uh, core dev team weekly think 22nd of October 2018. The note taker is Jacob. Thank you, Jacob. Um, <laughs> um, how, how are we doing, everyone? Okay, enthusiastic as always. I love it. <laughs> um, cool. Um, right, what do we do normally? Um, okay, we've got a note taker. Attendees, put your name on the attendees list if you're here. Um, if you've got a weekly update, then put it in the notes. I put the notes in the, um, in the chat panel. Um, Cool, let's go. Um, I've got an update. Uh, last week was the Go IPFS team were in town. So I spent a little bit of time with them. And uh, also uh, we managed to organize the first IPFS London meetup uh, in two years. I think there was one like previously two years ago, uh, but it clearly didn't come to anything. So we started it up again. Uh, a kick started by the Go team um, who gave some really good uh, talks and insights uh, and it was just awesome and everybody at the end of it was like, when is the next one? <laughs> and at the time I was like, I don't know, I literally just stopped, just finished this one. So, um, so that's really encouraging, very, very happy with that. Um, uh, but what else happened this week? Um, so I spent a lot of time reviewing uh, Vashko's IPNS pub sub uh, PRs. There's like some of them are quite big, and uh, he, yeah, they're they're all reviewed. I think they need some work, and then I need to re-review. Um, but that that was a big hurdle to to get over. Um, what else happened? Um, oh, so in last week. I released JS IPFS APIs uh, version 25 um, with a fix to uh, for allowing Chrome to upload files that were bigger than 150 megabytes. Uh, so that's cool. Um, and then almost immediately after I did that, uh, Ollie <laughs> told me that uh, it didn't work with uh, JS IPFS, and we didn't spot it immediately because it was only apparent. It only seemed to be apparent when you were uh, running. Uh, IPFS API and talking to a IPFS daemon. So th this was, there's this weird, weird thing there. <laughs> um, but it meant that uh, we couldn't upload big files to, uh, to a JS IPFS daemon. Um, and it was because Happy actually has a max bytes uh, setting on its roots, which is set by default to two megabytes. Um, and weirdly in node, this doesn't like this, this, we don't see this happen. Like it doesn't, um, it doesn't say that the payload's too, too big. Um, but in the browser it does. And I couldn't figure out exactly why my best guess is that, um, we know in the browser that stream HTTP actually buffers up everything before it sends it in one chunk. And I'm wondering if there's some sort of thing in Node.js which chunks up your, your input and sends it. Um, sends it in chunks that are probably smaller than one meg and maybe that max bytes option is not max bytes for the entire payload but per chunk from a stream so I, I'm not entirely sure but uh, anyway I tracked it down figured it out uh, and there's a pull request I'm just waiting for CI uh, to pass but uh, github's been down today so I haven't made much progress with uh, getting it to rerun builds and stuff like that um, and then, so what else happened? Um, JS IPFS is 033 is coming out soon with a new web UI. I released a release candidate so people can try it out before they buy. Um, and it seems to work pretty well. There is a, uh, like there's a couple of things that just need to go in, into the release um, uh, and including a, well, hopefully we can solve the issue where the web UI by default doesn't point to a JS IPFS, uh, the JS IPFS API port. Um, so we'll, we'll see if we can fix that before the, the actual release. Um, I'm currently not blocked on anything. Um, I will hopefully release JS IPFS 033 this week. Um, and uh, wait, wait, hang on, I've had, uh, uh, someone, Victor's changed something in my notes. <laughs> uh, so uh, basically because of like the meetup, because of releasing JS IPFS uh, 033, I didn't get a lot of time to work on CID base again. Um, I'm hoping that I might get time to work on it this week. Cool. Um, that's me. Does anyone have any um, quick questions? Uh, 
I just have excitement for all the updates and the releases. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, who's who's next? Who's next on the list? Okay, so wait. Um, so ask from Victor. A, I guess that's just a note from me. I will check that out later. Good. Okay. Uh, so Jacob, would you like to share with us your update, please? Yeah, last week I uh, was primarily prepping for the libpdp 0.24 release. Um, I have a release candidate out there now um, that I'll be using to test the IPFS, um, go through the test suites for that to make sure we don't have any regression issues. That includes delegate routing, state machine, and enabling relay by default. Um, and then libpdp switch has already been released 0.41. That has full uh, switch support in it. And then um, last week started looking at the Interplanetary Test Lab, um, all of the issues that have been around for the past year or so. So getting up to speed on that as part of the test bed stuff that we'll be doing for libpdp this year, um, or this quarter rather. So I'll be getting um, working on a test bed proposal this week based on all of the, the prior art that has already been done, um, and then continue working with the Go team on that, and then work on the libpdp daemon, um, start that process uh, for the interop and testbed work to get those. And then there is a PR out, I pinged uh, Pedro again for, um, for peer ID for support for um, different key types. So and then I have a, a PR that I can post once that's all done for IPFS to actually add it to the docs in case anybody wants to run IPFS with different keys. Any questions? Uh, no. Just one really quick question. The libp2p switch, is that in libp2p 024? Yes, it will come out with that as well. Okay. So. But that won't, because that's a minor version, so don't, we're not going to pick that up automatically in the current version of JS IPFS. Right. So I'll cool. do a. Um, I'm testing right now against that. And then once that goes, I imagine we'll probably do that in a either uh, a hotfix or a minor version release for JSI BFS. Cool. Cool. David? Yeah, um, I have a, a comment or suggestion. Uh, so like more people are picking up on Libre to Peer. Um, it's getting a lot of attention. A lot of people are representing it as like the project that doesn't deserve, like that is not getting it enough deserved attention. And so other projects are jumping, trying it out, running our examples. And people do like come to just Libre to Peer as a source of like way to understand how Libre to Peer works because our tutorials are pretty good actually. Um, and so right now is the time for like making changes on the API. Like if we are not happy with the API at all, uh, and I say this because I now see like new dial methods appearing for um, the state machine stuff and so on. And so uh, it would be great to like just like, get everyone to think very like carefully about like the top level API. I know that Alan has been thinking a lot about the top level API for JSIPFS. And so uh, perhaps like taking some ideas, like he did an amazing presentation both at Lab Week and, and also at the IPFS on the meetup. Um, which actually, by the way, the presentation that Alan did got Vizo super excited to then do gossip sub on JS. So Vashko and Jacob you should totally like check in with Vizo and, and get him even more excited so that he ships that in like a day. Um, <laughs> and and so <laughs> and and so yeah, like uh, think very careful about that. Um, I, I think now it's the right time. Um, but but yeah, like I, I know everyone is already busy. Just like F that in mind. <laughs> like it's not like it's not everything that you're doing. <laughs> yeah, I think going through some of the daemon stuff and then the test bed stuff will help like uncover things of oh this would be way easier if we just did it this way. Um, and maybe that's something I can also talk with. Um, Alan about for that integration piece with JSIPFS to see what make it could make that easier. I know we've talked a little bit um, about future stuff like iterators and things like that, but um, just general API would be good. Yeah. The the other thing that comes to mind on the peer to peer land specifically is really the ease to plug in new modules. Uh, one of the things, and this is still like very raw, like it is something very obvious. 
but still very raw in terms of like documentation and prep. Like it's still something I, I am like writing a lot of notes down, but but it is about running contests for multiple of our modules. And this will go from things like bit swap and like getting a bit swap contest going on where people can like just swap, hot swap, bit swap and try different strategies, PhD modules, pub sub, et cetera. And so, um, always having like a very clear way. And I think peer to peer is a little bit better than just because right now in this sense, because it's very easy to like plug a thing like a VHD. But right now, for example, it's not easy to plug a different pub sub. Like the pub sub is very like attached to flood sub. Um, so, so yeah, have that in mind because it, it might be a big thing of 2019 to have these multiple moments where we invite the whole community to like develop, like and by these modules, like, um, Think about like dependency injection a little bit because like we want to be able to say, hey, a pub sub module gets access to like the connect connection manager, it gets ac ac uh, gets access to like the dialing uh, slash listening, like handling protocols, get a gets access to anything that tracks reputation of the connections, and, and like with those inputs now as to figure out a strategy to like develop the pub sub minim, uh, minimum spending tree, something like that. Um, so that we invite like the whole research community uh, to to hack with us uh, and to like really convert with peer to peer and also IPFS into this platform for innovation. Like uh, we want to see like the next bleeding edge way to do DHTs and pub sub and multicast and, and bit swap uh, or block exchange to be on top of IPFS and, and only peer to peer. So, so yeah, another thing to have in mind. Expect more notes on this thing. Cool, okay, uh, shall we move on? Uh, who is next? Who is next? Uh, Vashko, could we have your update please? Um, yeah, hello, so I came from Ali in the middle of last week uh, and I started by, went through Alan's reviews for all the PRs for IPNS over yes. so. I think I fixed all his feedback. So, Alan, when you have time to go again through it, uh, be my guest. Uh, then uh, Alan also found a bug in uh, Data Store PubSub, which I already fixed. Uh, I also finished uh, uh, the spec proposal for IPNS. It was uh, in the previous week, but I didn't come to the uh, thing. Then uh, I went to the DHT interrupt as well. Uh, there was a problem with the lipid peer records interoperability. Finally, I had the PRs for it merged and released, and then I created the PRs for all other modules that were using the lipid peer records. Uh, then I also uh, created the PR for uh, fixing an issue that Ollie reported about uh, the local option being a global option of GSIPFS. And, uh, in the meantime, I also uh, reviewed several Jacob PRs for the Lipid Spear uh, last latest release. Um, blocked, I'm just uh, blocked in an issue for interface data store, which is blocking another uh, PR for JSIPFS. Uh, the interface data store PR was already reviewed by several people, but uh, it needs to be released. I think only the feed and the uh, free the lab uh, permissions, so the video, if you have time, just check it out. And uh, for this week, I want to finish the IPNS over pub sub interop tests and uh, get the DHT ready for being enabled by default in GSIPFS and uh, with the interop tests as well. Uh, any questions from us? Sorry, uh, I was also trying to answer another per another question. So I, I didn't really get what are the things that you are waiting on me. Could could you repeat that? Uh, uh, it's okay. it's a PR for uh, uh, interface data store. It's it was already reviewed by uh, Jacob and Alan, I think. It's just okay. uh, needs merge and release. Got it. Got it. Um, when you say like DHTs will be enabled by default, do you, do you have any recent good results on the interop part with GoIPFS? Uh, yes, with the uh, lip peer to peer record being uh, uh, fixed now, uh, I tried it before and it seemed good, but now I, after the releases, I want to check it again and uh, also try to make some stress tests that, as you recommended before. 
Awesome. That's great news. Awesome. Um, cool. Thank you, Vashka. Uh, Hugo, can we have your update, please? You're muted and not talking. <laughs> the microphone disappeared for you. Haha. <laughs> I think it works. Uh, so I will share my screen just to show you more stuff about the pipeline I showed you last week. Okay, so I finished the, the, the pipeline. Right now, uh, I wasn't, uh, wasn't able to have the, everything perfect because of all the GitHub problems, but the only thing missing, missing is the tests running just because they are connected. Uh, to be so the pipelines run faster. So just to give you a quick rundown through this, on every, uh, if you look at this one, it's a simple commit. You get all the uh, all the normal stuff, the checks, the links, to the test rules come after this one, and then you get the pre-release job. This is a use case. I Hugo, I can only see the bundle phobia. Oh, yeah. Is really? that what I meant to be seeing? Oh, I guess I have the wrong. Uh, what about now? That seems more relevant to what you were saying. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I, as I was saying, this is the pipeline. You can check it out in this view. Tests will come here in the middle. Uh, they are uh, perfectly working, just commented. Uh, you get the pre-release. This is a use case I talked with Alan to get uh, like RC versions uh, published. Uh, everything gets published to the next tag, uh, and uh, like it's continuous deployment, right? Um, and then whenever you want, you just manually run the release job to uh, like promote this pre-release to a uh, to live or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and another use case would be the running interrupt, the interrupt tests uh, on a scheduled basis. Um, it's not the scheduling part is not active, but that's just a, configure, a simple configuration. The important part here is the multi-project uh, relationship that I'm going to show you here. So basically, this job activates another job on the interrupt repo. And as you can see, this is uh, on, made uh, to fail on purpose, just so you can see how this all works. And through this, you can um, set up lots of stuff similar, run other types of tests. Um, and so related to this, I think it's enough for today. Uh, we're still having conversations with the infra team regarding Circle CI and GitLab CI and all that stuff. Hopefully, I, I will be able to talk to Michael today because he's on a weird time zone. Uh, another stuff, it's uh, also came from LabWeek. Uh, this is like uh, Greenkeeper, uh, but with like a filter to only our packages. So the Renovate is basically Greenkeeper, but it has the configuration we need. Uh, so we can say, okay, enable true, and then we give it whatever we want. This works with shareable configs like uh, S-Link, so we can have one in Asia uh, for all our repos, or we can have uh, each repo with each own configuration and we get a nice uh, pull request with the changes. This one is not the, the normal dependency of late pull request. This is the onboarding uh, pull request uh, related to Renovate. Uh, I, was, I wasn't meant to have this all uh, configured, but it didn't like me. 
uh, so to be quick, I'll pass to also did one, a couple of pull requests to improve uh, the speed of CTL. This hopefully will improve all the tests and all the repos. Uh, one of them was the swapping subcommand to execa. You can see some of the, the benchmarks here. It improves a, a little bit, not that much, but uh, it will open doors to other improvements. And another one, this this kind of bigger, is to be able to like. Um, run in it because when you start with CTL you kind of run four commands kind of like you need to spawn four shell process with this pull request uh, you only need to spawn two because you when you init you, you you pass the whole configuration you need you don't need to like run init run show config replace config and then daemon just to init and daemon so you can see the numbers are looking good uh, and also, I help out with the JSFFSAO upgrading to SV2 and release CTL. So, if anyone has any questions? I think I think that looks really cool, really promising. Um, I'm glad that Infra are informed about this and and they know what's going on. So that's good. Uh, I would still like to see JS IBFS a fork of that running and try it out before we do the switch. I want to make sure that this this experience is going to be better than uh, what we have at the moment. Um, but like it looks it looks amazing. I'm super excited for it. Um, yeah. Any any other questions? Yes. Um, I think I missed the discussion of why why this pipeline is implemented on on GitLab rather than Jenkins? This was a conversation we had on Lab Week, and this is just a proof of concept. Uh, like the Infra team is kind of looking to circle CI and other options uh, to improve all the old uh, pipeline and CI situation. Um, and then I went to with Michael and we start testing with GitLab CI and I did the setup. I just did a, a simple setup for the um, for a pipeline that would be useful for our use cases. Not like permanent or anything. Just like a proof of concept, so the infra team can uh, validate if this is any uh, has any value or not. Okay. And where where is this discussion happening? So I can. So I can jump in because I think CircleCI still suffers from the same problems. That what's the reason why we moved away from it in the in the in the first place? Yeah, I also I also agree. That's why I uh, I used uh, uh, GitLab CI instead of Circle. But uh, right now, uh, at least last week, they spent a lot of time on Circle CI. I still don't know why because I I still didn't have the opportunity to like. To a call or something with them uh, because I think they all on uh, like a weird time zone so it's like 10 a.m. for Michael or something like that uh, but it's all it's all been uh, like slack and uh, and calls not on any issue we should probably start one when when these previous comps become more uh, stable or whatever uh, I, one thing I discussed with Alan is just like, just like to make a, a little video explaining all of this and probably on that issue with that video we'll uh, talk about everything and get feedback from anyone and just validate if this is any value. I have a second question as well. Uh, the blocked, it says couple of AJR PRs, are you blocked? by those PRs or are the PRs blocked themselves? Um, I'm blocked, uh, especially for the reducing the bundle size work, at least on one PR. Uh, the documentation stuff is also blocked by it. Not, not nothing really uh, major, but it's uh, really important. Uh, one for the experimental build also. So, uh, it's just uh, a couple of PRs.
Would you mind like turning off screen share? Oh, it's not. I did. I did. Uh, awesome. Um, yeah, I think this is pretty cool. Uh, I I knew a little bit about like, this endeavor. Uh, I'm really happy seeing that there's progress and then there is like a prototype and like there's actually research. Uh, I would love to have, at the same time, there's a PR or an issue on infrastructure repo. I would actually like to see a PR to the contributing guidelines because this changes a lot in terms of like how we review PRs, how we like do releases, uh, where we check for stuff. Like a lot of the burden can be moved from the developer to CI, which is, what CI is supposed to do, um, and and also like the the whole like chain of like running interrupt tests from like one of the um, dependencies of base is really great. So if you could open a PR to contributing guidelines, so that we see, so that we have an opportunity to see, oh like is this removing burden from the developer or adding other tasks that we are not seeing yet? Like who is going to maintain all of this? Uh, is it infrastructure? Is it as et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Is it is it the lead maintainer of the module, for example? Um, and, and so if you could like go through that document for requests to the places where you need to, like we will need to change. Um, I, I think like, that we will reveal a lot of like what it means to every single one here and like every one that is going to be a contributor to the project in the future. Of course, uh, uh, I'll do exactly that. I'm just kind of waiting for uh the talk i have scheduled with michael and um uh, i forgot to name erin i think uh to talk about uh, circle ci and with live ci uh, and after that i'll make a, a, an issue describing everything with the video so you can better understand how all this works awesome cool okay uh we are rapidly running out of time who, who's next on the list? Do we have anyone else? Uh, cool, Volker, would you like to go? You are muted, yes. there we go. Yeah, it didn't work, okay. All right, uh, so my update is pretty quick. Um, I did some breaking changes on IPLD, one merged, one in review. And um, this those will help to make the API better, but also make help with Hugo's work on the bundle size. Then I finally recorded my Phosphor-G talk. <laughs> After all those weeks, it's published on YouTube. Check it out if you care about geodata. And then, um, yeah, I looked into, like, have Victor about looking into CI issues. And next is for me working on the graph sync stuff. Um, basically writing down the spec that Michael and I have in mind, which is different from the other graph, upcoming graphs in spec, but we'll, yeah. I, I will write it down so we have a, a thing to discuss about. Um, yeah, that's all I have. Awesome, sorry, I should stop typing when. <laughs> uh, does anyone have any questions for Volker? I was just typing in a, uh, a video the, of Juan uh, uh, presenting like some t uh, selector stuff and uh, graph sync stuff, which I haven't quite finished watching yet. Um, but you should check it out. Yeah, which is basically yeah different from that's so why I've watched it and it's different from what Michael and I propose. Okay. <laughs> cool. Um, cool. Well, um, do we have any other? Any other items? Does anyone have any general questions or um, or problems or want to say anything? Cool. If we if we're all done here, then we're all done. Um, oh, David. Yeah, I do have uh, one more thing. Um, which okay, if you just said that, I'm sorry because I was just like trying to do like a PR review to unblock people. Um, so my bad. Uh, there is a graph sync talk um, from Juan from last week. Uh, I shared with yes, you. Yes, we like, just discussed it. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I, I was not sure. I want to make sure. Not, you know, I recommend everyone checking it out. Actually, it's 30 minutes. You can watch it in 15 if you do 2x speed. Uh, and it basically goes through IPLD selectors and graph sync uh, and what it means for. Uh, okay, I'll add the link to the. Um, to the notes. Um, it is one of the show me what you got sessions. Um, and, and yeah, um, yeah, I'll add it to the, to the notes of the show. So I'll interested. 
having two devices is really hard. <laughs> like my my head keeps spinning between my laptop and my <laughs> my iPad. My apologies. Okay, cool. Uh, we are over time now, and uh, it's been rad to talk to you all. Um, uh, I will see you next week, I'm sure, for a, another exciting session of uh, JSIPFS core devs talk to each other and tell each other what we were doing last week and this week and next week. <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, have fun IPFSing, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>